Two things I hate more than anything, daylight savings time, it's the bane of my existence. I don't really want to go on a rant, but I will if you beg me to do it. Because we're not farmers anymore, guys. I haven't met a single farmer in the last 20 years. No offense to the farmers out there. We don't need daylight savings time anymore. Why does my oven even have a clock? I have no idea how to use it. The only thing I hate more than daylight savings time, the sound of piezo on an acoustic guitar, DI. I have performed at restaurants all over the world. <laughs> the worst sound is the sound of a thin piezo guitar on an acoustic guitar DI. I love the sound of a microphone miking up an excellent acoustic guitar like a Martin D18, but you can't do that in a live setting. And if you're one of those people at home who are like, just take the extra effort to mic up an acoustic guitar and put a large diaphragm condenser on stage, you're insane. This video is not for you, turn away. That's insane, I swear to God, I've tried to it even, it's insanity. Thankfully, Audio Sprockets and Tone Dexter have sent me this new device, this is a pedal that essentially you can capture the sound of a really high quality condenser and then have your acoustic DI do that. What it does is it takes the input from your DI and it takes the waveform of like a really well captured device and it takes the difference and it just turns your DI into that thing. So we're gonna test it today because again, this is the, in my opinion, the, the LR bags on a D18 or a Martin Dreadnought is the best piezo sound ever and I still don't like it. So for instance, real quick, I'll just do uh, an example of it. This has a, a piezo mic blend. Here's a piezo one. Now if I go to the mic, a little too mid-rangey, and it's like, oh, I can kind of like dial it back, back and forth, but then it's like I've got my, my finger in this sound hole. Not a good look, guys. It's just not a good look. So anyways, first of all, before we wave map this, I want to show you just how you can kind of do this. I mean, you can just make it a tuner. Basically, if you ever see one of these strobe things going around, it means that you're in for an adventure trying to tune a guitar perfectly because you can never do it, but it is gonna give you the most accurate tuning you can get. Now, I've messed around with this pedal just for a little bit before shooting this video. I sarcastically took the lows and just cranked them all the way up. Lows and highs all the way up and the mids all the way down. Pure sarcasm. And I got the best tone I've ever gotten out of an acoustic. Yeah, maybe I think if I go to the mic now. And then it's like you can find the sweet spot here. And that right there is the best sound I've ever got. And that's just sarcastically using the pedal for a minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the wave mapping feature and see if I can get an even better sound than that. So you can see there's like a three band EQ right here, which is better than just the tone knob on an acoustic guitar anyways, which is really easy to kind of just go back and forth. I'm gonna reset this just to flat for this example here, okay? And then now let's try to make a wave map. All you, get, all you do is you press the tuner and then you press the boost pedal and that brings you into training the, the setting, right? So if I have this uh, AKG C414 set up, basically when I'm tracking the acoustic guitar, I kind of have it around here. So what you do is you just kind of play around for a while. Cool, so now we did that and played around for like a minute. It is transferring the, and then oh, hold boost to save. Okay, so you can actually monitor yourself while you're doing it with uh, the headphone out. Uh, I chose not to because I'm so familiar with how this microphone works. But yeah, so now if we hold the boost, we can just save it and now it's saving the wave map. So now you can hear. 
I have this saved as number two. So when you go back and forth between the wave maps, you can see one is empty. Again, there's that piezo sound. And then if I go up to two, oh, come on, go up to two. You go to my wave map. I'm like Kelly Slater, I'm wave mapping so much. And you can tell it kind of took the high end of that piezo and made it more natural. That's actually kind of crazy. Like it really does sound like a condenser. I'm also kind of sitting right in front of Logic looking at it and even looking at it, it looks like I'm looking at a mic'd acoustic guitar waveform. And then again, if you want to, you can still make adjustments from here. So let's say, all right, having that as the, just, you know, the main source, I'll still EQ uh, just even a nice condenser microphone afterwards. I, I, especially in a mix, I'm all about get those mids out and then boost the highs. The thing about boosting the lows of just a piezo, you kind of get this like, it's not like a tight low end response that like a good condenser is going to give you. So I'm gonna make some further adjustments from here, maybe get a little more high end. See, that sounds like the high end of an acoustic guitar. super impressed by this. This is, I've, I've seen videos on other devices that you can kind of like capture stuff. This seems to be the, the easiest wave mapping device that I've ever seen used. And it's also red, the pedal is red and that's cool. So thank you to Sweetwater for sending this over. If you have any questions or comments, or if you want to see me tone map, wave map some of my guitars and mics, let me know what combo you like best. And uh, I will have an affiliate link for the Audio Sprockets Tone Dexter 2 in the description. Thanks for checking it out.